the Japanese red vinyl pressings are the best sounding Beatles albums in the world. That's what I've been hearing and reading about for years. So in this video, I'm going to find out if that's true and see how they compare to the 1982 and 2014 mono box sets and put together the ultimate Beatles mono vinyl collection. Hi, I'm Andrew from Parlogram Auctions, and this is the 1986 Japanese Red Vinyl Mono Box Set. If you want to buy one of these, don't expect too much change out of $2,000. Why? Well, it's supposed to contain the best sounding mono pressings of the Beatles UK albums ever. So in this video, I'm going to see how it compares with two other well-respected mono box sets. First, there's BMC 10 otherwise known as the UK Mono Collection from 1982. And then of course, there's the mighty All Analog Mono Collection from 2014. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that we've already compared the 1982 and 2014 sets in a previous video. But has this set got what it takes to beat them? This Japanese set is entitled The Beatles Original Mono Record Box and was released in June 1986 to commemorate the Beatles' first concert in Tokyo 20 years earlier, in 1966. However, this wasn't the first time that the mono albums had received the red vinyl reissue treatment. In response to the UK mono reissues of 1981, Odeon in Japan had issued their own limited edition mono series in 1982, which comprised of 10,000 copies of each album pressed on red vinyl. The 1986 pressings in this box used the same artwork, the same catalogue numbers, and even cost the same as the 1982 issues, 2,300 yen, which equates to around £50 or $65 today. The main difference between the two series was a change in the design of the obis. Obis, meaning literally belts, were and had long been a unique feature of Japanese LPs. These were essentially extremely fragile strips of paper designed to add an extra dimension of design to an album, which, as well as serving as a marketing tool, added extra information about the album to the customer. Its presence on an album, especially of this vintage, is important. Not only does it increase the value of the album, it also tells us that the record has been treasured and is likely to be in top condition. The Obis on the 1986 albums were wider than the 1982 series and carried a triangular logo containing the words 20th Anniversary of Japan Concert. It was 20 years ago. Although it's accepted that 10,000 copies of each album were pressed in 1982, it's thought that fewer copies of the 1986 edition were made. Also, unlike the 1982 set, the 1986 pressings were collected into a box set, which was limited to just 1,000 copies. Looking at the labels, it's very difficult to tell them apart at first glance, and it's only the addition of the tiny JIS, Japanese Industrial Standards logo, which separates the two. The other significant difference between the two is the matrices. For example, the matrix on side one of Revolver on the 1982 set is YEX605M1S, but on the 1986 pressing, it's YEX605D1S. And that D suffix continues to be present on all of the other albums in the 1986 set. The Japanese knew how to press and package records with a kind of care and quality which at that time was lacking in the UK. For example, the Japanese covers were made of a much thicker card and had a stylish matte finish. The UK ones, by contrast, were much thinner, and although the image quality was good, they lacked the quality feel of the Japanese covers. The UK ones, by contrast, were much thinner, and although the image quality was good, they lacked the quality feel of the Japanese covers. The UK discs were, of course, pressed on standard 1982 black vinyl, 
which was okay, but certainly not audiophile grade. The Japanese discs, although slightly lighter, were pressed on high quality, super quiet red vinyl and prove that the weight of vinyl alone is no guarantee to good sound quality. Of course, the Japanese discs had extras, which you just didn't get in the UK set. As well as the obi, you got a four page insert with the lyrics printed in Japanese and English, an anti-static inner and a polythene outer cover. The Japanese discs also had smoother edges than the UK pressings. Now that might seem inconsequential, but so many of the UK albums suffered from seam splits due to the discs edges cutting through the seams, sometimes even before they'd reached the shops. The 2014 set by contrast had beautiful covers, which are arguably better than the UK originals and top quality heavy vinyl. Curiously, most of the albums in this Japanese set also include a selection of local tourist information leaflets. Each album has a different one advertising Japanese spas, holiday and ski resorts, restaurants, as well as local sightseeing guides and maps of public transport. Like the UK set, these red vinyl pressings used tapes which were copied directly from the original analog mono album master tapes. And thanks to the superb book which came with the 2014 mono box, we can see exactly when those transfers were done. EMI was meticulous with its paperwork, so there can be no doubting the accuracy of the handwritten transfer notes on the mono master tape boxes, which show us the exact dates the transfers for Japan were done. The first set of transfers were carried out at Abbey Road between the 22nd and 24th of July, 1981. However, no mention is made of any transfers on the tape boxes of A Hard Day's Night or Help. The tape boxes also show us that additional transfers for Japan were made for Beatles for Sale, Rubber Soul, Sgt Pepper and The White Album on the 23rd of March 1986. So apart from Rubber Soul, why did they need a second set of transfers for those albums in 1986? Did the 1981 copies go missing? Were they damaged? It's all a bit of a mystery. So how do these pressings actually sound? To see what all the fuss is about, I have listened to all three sets back to back on the same system and at the same volume. I'll now take you through each album and tell you the one I think sounds best from the three sets. By the way, although the discs in the BMC 10 box were pressed and available individually in 1981, I'm going to refer to them as the 1982 pressings in this section because that was when the box was issued. So let's kick off with Please Please Me. It was the Beatles' original cutting engineer, Harry Moss, who was responsible for cutting all the discs in the 1982 set, and they faithfully replicate that original 60s sound, much of which was down to an upper mid-range boost, done purely to make them sound loud on those old reproducers and radios. But don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against that authentic 60s sound, but the 1986 Japanese pressings take a very different approach. This disc, like most of the others in this set, has some high-end roll-off, which makes it sound duller than the 1981 disc. The bass has been boosted a little too. However, unlike the recent remixes, it's not overdone and gives a pleasant, inoffensive sound which doesn't hurt the ear when the volume is cranked. The 2014 disc strikes a balance between the two. It has more high-end air than the Japanese disc, but more bass than the 1981 and is overall much better. So I'm awarding this first round to the 2014. The original UK pressing of With The Beatles was a hugely exciting and loud sounding album, especially on its original Dash One cutting. However, its wings were quickly clipped by numerous recuts, which never really recaptured its initial sound. This 1982 disc has the Harry Moss Dash 8 recut, which sounds smooth and clear and stays fairly close to the familiar sound of the 60s pressing. The Japanese disc knocks off the album's harsh edges, leaving just the right amount of warmth and clarity. Paul's voice on Till There Was You sounds wonderful on the Japanese disc. 
The 2014 isn't as warm and generally comes across as rather thin and weak sounding. The whole album isn't as rich and satisfying as the Japanese disc, which wins this round for me. The UK pressing of A Hard Day's Night is a tour de force and is thrilling from beginning to end. In fact, that original 3N cutting was so good, or too much of a headache to reproduce, that Harry Moss ended up reusing it on both sides of the 1982 mono collection box set. The 1982 disc sounds just like the 1964 disc, exciting and involving with everything in focus and balanced perfectly. The Japanese disc, however, sounds very disappointing in comparison, like it was cut from a lower generation tape and it is inferior in every way to the 1982 disc. Remember that there was no note of any transfer marked on the original tape box, suggesting that maybe this wasn't cut from the original master, which may go to explain its grainy quality. The 2014 disc sounds almost identical to the 1982, with maybe just a touch more top end, but still a great sounding cut overall and wins this round by a whisker. Beatles for Sale is a much maligned album in mono, and it's clear to see that the issue lies with the mix on the tape, not the pressing or the cutting. Its lack of high-end detail and clarity is baffling, considering the depth and clarity of the stereo mix. Anyway, let's stick to mono here, and both the Japanese and 2014 have low-end boosts and slight high-end roll-offs. Quieter tracks like Words of Love sound wonderful on the Japanese disc, but the more rocking tracks are too tame. The 1982, which is essentially the 1964 cut, is more alive and is clearer with none of the mid-range softness of the others, so I'm giving this one to the 1982. Help is another poor sounding album in its original UK guise, with the only real highlights being Yesterday and Ticket to Ride, which unfortunately is nearly always groove worn. The 1982 issue of Help has a Dash 3 recut on side one, which is an improvement over the 1965 cut. The Japanese disc is less toppy and richer and warmer overall, which, like on With The Beatles, works wonders for the vocals. The 2014 again sits right in the middle. It's brighter than the red vinyl, but still has the warmth in the vocals, which was missing from the 1981 cut. So for that, it gets my vote in this round. The best sounding UK pressing of Rubber Soul to my ears is the Dash 5 cut done by EMI's legendary classical cutting engineer Hazel Yarwood in January 1966. It has a masterful touch with a right balance of everything. The 1982 disc has a Dash 6 Harry Moss recut on side 1, which is very close to the Dash 5, which is left intact on side 2. The Japanese disc is a bit shy on the high end, making some of the tracks sound a little soft and is missing some of the bite on the guitars. I detected a bass boost too, which isn't overdone. Mastering engineer on the 2014 set, Sean McGee, said that the amount of bass on the original tape was uncuttable, but there's still plenty of it on this disc. It's the 2014 which again takes the best elements from the other two pressings to give us the best of both worlds. So it wins again. The 1982 Revolver is a very competent sounding cutting and sticks very closely to the 1966 sound, which isn't a bad thing. The Japanese disc loses some of its highs and mids and sounds softer overall. Again, this approach suits the quieter tracks like For No One, but at the expense of the more energetic and guitar-led tracks and robs them of their core energy. The 2014 gets it right in all departments, making it the clear winner in this round. Now we come to the big one, Sgt Pepper. All of these pressings have been lauded throughout the years, but now it's time to find out which one I think comes out on top. The 1982 disc is virtually a carbon copy of the 1967 disc, which is a good thing. It stays true to the original, which isn't surprising as it uses the same Dash 1 cutting as the 1967 first pressing. I was a bit disappointed with the Japanese disc. It sounds woolly compared to the 1982 and sounds like it might have had some noise reduction. The bass is nice though, but it's all a bit too respectable and under a blanket for my liking. 
The 2014 is better, but has a slight top end boost, which goes just a bit too far for me, and as a result, loses the warmth of the original. So I'm going to award this round to the 1982 pressing. The White Album has so many different sound textures on it, I guess you could pick one pressing for one track, whilst preferring another pressing for another. All sides of the 1982 set are original 1960s analogue cuttings, so out of the three, it's the closest to the 1968 original, and it sounds great. The Japanese disc has a little more bass and a nice rounded high end, which gives it a real depth and detail, so it's a close call. But the 2014 balances everything out perfectly and just scrapes the win here. Yellow Submarine is a 100% fold down of the stereo, but is included here because both the 1982 and 1986 sets include it. The Japanese disc is very well mannered, but too much so I think. Some of the tracks sound very pleasant, but its edges have been tamed, which is especially noticeable on It's All Too Much. However, George Martin's orchestral score on side two on this disc never sounded better. So I'm going to call this one a draw. So to sum up, the 1982 pressings are the children of the 1960s pressings, and the discs never stray too far away from the authentic 60s sound, warts and all. The Japanese box with its ultra quiet vinyl is a superb sounding set, but its EQ choices, whilst improving some of the more intimate and quieter tracks, take away some of the edge and excitement of the more energetic performances. It's too well mannered for my liking, and I think the 2014 box sounds better overall. It seems to address and fix all of the issues on both the 1982 and 1986 sets, and is, outside of the joy of owning the originals, the best way to hear the Beatles albums in mono, and certainly the only mono box set you'll ever need. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up or why not subscribe or consider joining the channel because there's a lot more videos like this on the way. But I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.